I don't know if y'all ever think about things. I, I'm one of those type of people that I, that I think a lot. And I think about what Jesus' hands were like. Do y'all ever think about things like that? First thing I think about is Jesus, he is a carpenter. So I'm going to say Jesus probably had, had old rough hands and everywhere he went, people wanted to touch those hands. I think about Jesus whenever I think about his hands, I think about the, the scars that was on his hands and those scars was, was put on his hands for, for us. And that makes me think about stuff like that. And I also think about Jesus whenever, whenever he did, Gene, like you were saying, I had the kids come up and I think about Jesus, he had a tender, tender touch too. To the point that the kids wanted to, to be around him and, and wanted to be touched by him. And I also think about those old, those old disciples that was out there mending their nets and everything. And I, and I believe that whenever Jesus walked up there to him, all of them, I believe that Jesus probably just put his hand on their shoulder and told them, said, won't you come on and follow me? So Jesus, he had a lot of, a lot of different touches that he made. And, and a lot of you have experienced Jesus' touch in a lot of different ways. A lot of you felt his, his touch through the Holy Spirit. A lot of you felt his touch by, by how he's healed you from situations and circumstances. A lot of y'all felt his touch by, by whenever you pray and you pray that God will, will take care of you and your family through whatever you're going through. And, and all of a sudden you're like, man, God touched me. And there's a lot of touches that he did. And I, I think about a lot of times whenever I think about how God touches us, it was some healing touches also. A lot of y'all went through healing. A lot of you uh, probably went through healing that you didn't think that you was able to go through. And you thought, you know, man, this is going to be the end of me. But, but that, that healing touch of, of Jesus Christ changed you. Most of the time I don't read a lot of scripture, but I'm going to read you a lot of scripture. And it's because it's going to get me somewhere. And I want y'all to listen to these scriptures as I, as I preach this about the, the touch of Jesus. Because all these touches... They may, not, they may not all relate to every one of you, but they related to every one of these people. And I ask you, how is Jesus touching you now? Because if Jesus is not touching your life, you may not be in contact with him. You may not be putting yourself in a position. Brother Steve, I'm, I'm in church right now. No, I'm, I'm telling you. I've come to church before. How many of y'all come to church? It's time to be honest. How many of y'all have come to church, but you really thought there's other places that I would rather be. You know, we look around, all you spiritual people, we're like that. Or you may have come to church and you thought, I'm just not, I'm just not in the mood to be at church this morning because you know something, I just wanted to lay in bed or I just wanted to be, and, and then all of a sudden the Spirit of God touched you different than you've ever experienced it before. See, I'm going to read you something because Peter's mother-in-law, she she knew that touch about Jesus. Matthew 8, 14, let me read this to you. And it'll be on the, it'll be on the screens because I'm going to read you several. But it says, and when Jesus come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid sick of a fever. Y'all know, y'all think about this. How many of you ladies would have somebody to come to your house and you was laid there sick? You know that she was bad sick with what was going on with this fever. But listen to this. And it says, and he touched her hand and the fever left. And then listen to what she did. She rose up and she ministered to them. Ladies, y'all know what this is all about, man. All of a sudden, she just jumped up after she felt the touch of Jesus and she started probably cooking and cleaning, preparing things for a feast for them because she, all of a sudden she felt the, the touch of Jesus. There's two blind men in Matthew 9, 27. I want to read you this scripture. They knew about Jesus' touch. It said, when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him. Listen, they followed him and they was crying, saying, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And whenever he came into the house, the blind men came unto him. Listen to this. These people right here, they instigated the contact with Jesus because they needed something. They needed their sight. There's some of you that's out here that you have a need that none of us will ever know about.
There's some of you out there that's got a need that you may have been hurt in church, that you may have been hurt by a family member. You may be uh, feeling sickness or something that's unto death that you're thinking, what am, I, what am I doing here? And you need to initiate contact with him. And they came to Jesus and he said, do you believe that I am able to do this? Let me ask you a question. Do y'all believe that this savior of the world that we just got through singing about, do y'all believe that he has the power and authority to heal you under any circumstances that you go through? Do you believe it whenever, you're, whenever you feel like that you're in the darkest part of your life that Jesus can shine that light on your life and touch you and change you forever just by touching you? That's what our Savior is able to do. And they asked him, he said, do you believe that I'm able to do that? And they said, oh yeah, we believe it, Lord. There's a lot of people who say they believe in the touch of God, but listen to what people say. Brother Steve, I, I don't like to pray for myself. You're ashamed of yourself. Of course we need to pray for ourselves because if we don't pray for ourselves, how easy is it for us to go down a dark path? How easy is it for us to look at something with lust? How easy is it for us to, to let something slide of our, out of our mouth that's deep down in our heart? It's important that we pray for ourselves and we tell God everything. Brother Steve, he knows me. He wants to hear it from you. And the Bible says that he touched their eyes and he healed them. And the Bible says in verse 30, it says, and their eyes was open. See, there's even rulers. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe that today that our rulers over our nation don't believe that they, that they can be touched by God. I don't believe that they believe in the God that I serve and the Lord Jesus that I serve. And listen to this, because they need to believe in order to be touched. Listen to what, what Matthew 9, 18 says. It says, why he spake unto them, behold, came a certain ruler and he worshiped him saying, my daughter is now, even now dead and lays her hands upon her. Come and lay your hand on her that she'll live. And Jesus arose and come to follow him. But I want y'all to see, go on down to verse 23. When Jesus came into the ruler's house, he saw all the people playing the music and all the people was making noise. And he said, I want y'all to give place for her because she's not dead, but she sleeps. And all of them laughed at him. Listen, we need to be ready to follow God even though everybody in the world is laughing at us. And listen to what it says. But when the people were put out, he went in and he took her by the hand and the Bible says that the, the maid arose. This is that savior that we're talking about this month that's being in, the, in a manger, laying in that manger and being brought here to this earth and people laughed and mocked and talked about him and put him to death. See, there's a reason that many people feel like that they, can't, that they have to reach out to Jesus, but sometimes... You know, we think, you know, Jesus, he ought to reach out to me all the time. But how many times have you really reached out to Jesus? Matthew 9, 20 says, And behold, a woman which was with disease, with the issue of blood of 12 years, came and touched the hem of his garment. And he said to her, Oh, if I would just touch the hem of the garment, I would be made whole. And Jesus turned about and said, Daughter, be a good cheer. Your faith has made you whole. I'm going to ask you, where is our faith today? That this God that we love and that we serve is able to handle every bit of our situations. And there's a reason that people aren't healed because they're not touching him. <sighs> Jesus touched people everywhere he went. I'm about, I'm about done with this, so I'm getting to the message if y'all don't mind. In Matthew 14, 34, let me read this scripture to you. Whenever he was gone over and he came to the land, Genezareth had said there's a man, a place that had knowledge of him. These people just heard about Jesus. And they, and they was sent out to the country to bring everybody unto him that he may heal these deceased. And he brought, they brought him that he might just touch the hem of his garment. And many that were touched him, they were made whole. There's a song that said, oh, just touch the hem of his garment and thou shalt be made whole. Gold City sung that many, many years ago. And I'm getting to this point right here because Brother Steve, I, I feel like that there's evil hands holding me. Let me share something with y'all. I don't want to embarrass him, but Tyler, come here a minute. I will, but I don't mean to. 
Back years ago, whenever Carrie would leave home, she would leave home and as soon as she would leave home, Tyler and I had something that we would do. And it was called wrestling on Carrie's bed. I know it's my bed too, but at our house, there's not many things that's mine. Amen, men? So at Carrie's house, whenever she would leave me and Tyler, I'd say, it's on. And me and Tyler, you remember this? We would run to the bedroom, and whenever we would get there, this is what I would do. Tyler would come running, and I would be on that bed on my knees, and I'd say, come get you some, boy. You know why? Because Tyler was about this tall. And he would come running into that bedroom, and whenever he'd get there, he'd come up there, and we would fight. Oh, we would fight like crazy. We would fight to the point that whenever, whenever Carrie would pull up, we'd say, hurry up, we got to fix the bed. I would be soaking wet with sweat, and he would just, and, and oh, we would just hurry up and throw all, the, throw all the bed sheets and all the covers on, and we would fix everything because, and Carrie would come in there, and she'd say, it stinks in here. <laughs> and the reason it would stink in there is because two nasty boys was in there sweating like crazy on her bed wrestling. Any of y'all ever wrestle your kids on your bed? If you don't, you better get them in there and wrestle with them because listen, if you wrestle with them when they're babies, they'll stand beside you whenever they get older. And they'll be the man of God that you pray and ask him to be. But listen to this. Now it's to the point that I know that I can't handle this boy no more. <laughs> although, I, although I don't have to, but if I did, let me share something with you. If I did have to handle him, I would have to put a mighty hand on him. And that mighty hand that I would use to handle him now is different than that mighty hand because whenever he is a kid, bend over. Whenever he was a kid, I could hold him just like this and I would be on my knees and I could hold him and he would struggle to get back up and I could hold him because my hand was strong enough to hold him. But now I have to seek the hand of God on him to touch his life, to make sure that he stays straight. Let me share something with you. Grandparents, parents, if you want your babies to grow up to be men of God, you need to have your hands on them. And then you need to sit God on them whenever they go wrong. I have whooped this child one, and I whooped him good, by the way. I whooped this child one time in his life, and he still remembers it today, and it was my fault that I whipped him. You remember it? And it was because that little boy went and played and I lost my attention of him. He went and he played and I was too busy. I was too busy mowing the yard, making things look good and I couldn't find him and he couldn't hear me when I hollered. And I whipped him all the way to the house. And it was my fault. I did not say I'm sorry for whipping him because I've never had to do it again. Some of you may be saying, oh, I love my child. Do you know I love you? Did I tell you I love you? Did I whoop you like I loved you? <laughs> you follow me? Y'all, I want you to know something. If you want your kid to grow up to be a child of God, Put your hands on them. Reach your hand out to the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to put your hand on my child. Because right now, my girls, I don't see them much, but I know that God's hands on them because I pray for them. Listen, I know where he's at every night, but I still want my hand on him. Y'all give him a round of applause. I love you. We get to the point in our life at times that we feel like it we're so dirty. That we're so dirty that God can't love us. That we're so dirty that God can't heal us. We get to the point that we get feel like it we're so dirty that if God put his hand on us, God would say, oh, that's too dirty for me. I want to ask you, how dirty are you? Are you dirt dirty? 
You got a little bit of dirt on you to where you feel like it's your, man, I, I'm dirty. God don't want no part of me. Are you mud dirty to where you feel like it? you've got down in that pit and you've wallowed around a little bit and you're thinking, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mud dirty now. See, I've been, I've, been, I've been past dirt dirty. I've been to mud dirty. Are you, are you to the point of leprosy dirty? Brother Steve, nobody in the world touched leopards. Jesus did. Jesus touched those leopards just like I touched my son. I'm going to read it to you. I want, I, want you to, I want you to see something before I do. Go to Exodus chapter 3. Let me, let me read you a scripture. Exodus chapter 3. And I want you all to pay attention. Verse 19. The children of Israel was there under Pharaoh's mighty hand. And Pharaoh was, Pharaoh said, I'm not going to let you go. And I want you to pay attention to this because there's some of you that's under Satan's mighty hand right now. And the devil feels like he's not going to let you go. The Bible says in Exodus 3, 19, he said, I am sure that the king, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh king of Israel, will not let you go, not by a hand, but let me tell you about God, what God said. The Lord said, I will stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders and all that I can do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let go. Let me tell you something about this God we serve. Whenever the devil comes and he gets into your family and he gets into your life and he gets into your walk, let me tell you something. My God can slay the devil just like that. That's how strong my God is. Brother Steve, I'm seeking. I'm seeking. So did Peter. He was seeking. And he was out there, and as long as he kept his eyes and kept his eyes focused on the Lord, he was fine. But all of a sudden, he started seeing the winds and the waves. And all of a sudden, he took his eyes off Jesus. But Jesus reached down his hand, and he brought old Peter back up, didn't he? By that mighty hand of God. Brother Steve, I'm dirty. I am dirty, dirty, dirty. It's my last scripture, and I want y'all to listen to it. Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. I'm going to read you this scripture. The Bible says, When he came down the multitude, there's a great multitude of people following him. And behold, there came leopards, and they worshiped him. And they said, Lord, if you will, would you please make me clean, Lord? And Jesus put forth his hand and he touched the dirtiest of dirty. He didn't touch dirt. He didn't touch mud. He touched leprosy. That's what my God does. He touches leprosy. So whatever you're going through in your life, you can get it right just by bringing yourself to the hand and the touch of God. And Jesus put forth his hand and he touched him. He said, and I will make you clean. And immediately the leprosy was clean. <sighs> Let me, let me show you something about all these people, though. You ready? First person I talked to, after she was healed, immediately she started ministering to Jesus. The second one, whenever he touched that person, the Bible says that, he started, that they started following him. The third one, the first thing they did is they came and worshiped him. The fourth one, come unto him. The fifth one had knowledge about him and brought people with him. The sixth one cried and said, Lord, save me. And the last one said, Lord, are you able to make me clean? And the Lord said, yeah, and he touched him. You're falling under one of those jurisdictions right there. Are you worshiping him? Are you coming to him? Are you asking him to make me clean? What are you doing? Because I'm going to tell you something. It is important that we get touched by Jesus. Just so you know, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy has flooded my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Yo, I don't know what he needs to touch you about, but I'm telling you, this Lord that I'm talking about, he will touch your life and he'll change it forever. That's what he's all about. But what are you about? 
Are you going to worship him? Are you going to come to him? Are you going to follow him? Are you going to serve him? Are you going to love him? Are you going to obey him? Are you going to take his strength and, and go out and share it with people like all these people did? That's on you. But oh, does he touch us. Whenever all we got to do is just ask him. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rose. Let me hear you, church. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. God, thank you that you touched my life, God. Thank you that you didn't let a little dirt, a little mud, even a little leprosy in my life keep me from your touch, Lord. God, there's people here right now that they're allowing just a little bitty, bit of dust to come in to their heart and their life and their mind. And the old devil saying, just look at you dust. Look at you dust. And not having victory in Jesus, Lord. My prayer is that they give their heart to you, Lord. I pray for your mighty hand to touch their life this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we